Under our labor code, one of the grounds to fire an employee is the commission of a crime or offense by the employee against the person of his employer or any immediate member of his family or his duly authorized representatives. Let's break that down. Under this ground, the requirements are, first, the employee commits a crime or an offense. Second, the crime or offense is a crime against the person of the employer. A crime against the person simply means a crime or offense which involves bodily harm or threat of bodily harm. Third, the crime is committed against either the employer, his immediate family, or his authorized representative. What does the code mean by the employer's immediate family? The Department of Labor and Employment clarified that this should be construed according to Article 150 of the Family Code. So under Article 150 of the Family Code, the immediate family members include the parents, the employer's spouse, the children of the employer, siblings and half-siblings of the employer. So reading from Article 150 of the Family Code, family relations include those first between husband and wife, second between parents and children, third among brothers and sisters, whether full or half-blood. All right, that ground was fairly straightforward and I don't think it, it needs further explanation. Okay, let's look at analogous causes for dismissal. Now, you might be wondering why there are offenses specified in your company's code of conduct which are not included or which are not expressly enumerated under the labor code as just causes. So is it okay then for a company to include these offenses which are not expressly enumerated by the labor code? Article 282 of the labor code provides a catch-all provision to include other causes for dismissal. But it further specifies that these causes must be analogous to the grounds already identified by the code. To recap, the causes a company can validly include in its company code of conduct or code of discipline must be analogous or similar to 1. Serious misconduct in connection with the, the employee's work. 2. Willful disobedience of the lawful orders of the employer in connection with the employee's work. 3. Gross and habitual neglect of his duties. 4. Fraud or willful breach of trust. And lastly, commission of a crime or offense against the person of the employer. So how do we determine if an act or omission by an employee can qualify as an offense analogous to the causes for termination? There is no hard and fast rule. But as a rule of thumb, the cause must involve a voluntary or willful act or omission by the employee since all the mentioned grounds involve an act or omission. Let's look at some cases. In Heavy Lift Man Manila Incorporated versus Court of Appeals, an employee was fired because he couldn't get along with his co-employees. In this case, however, the Supreme Court held that the dismissal was illegal because the employer failed to present substantial evidence. Nevertheless, the Supreme Court held that an employee's attitude problem is a valid ground for termination, being a situation analogous to loss of trust and confidence. The Supreme Court stated, an employee who cannot get along with his co-employees is detrimental to the company for he can upset and strain the working environment. Without the necessary teamwork and synergy, the organization cannot function well. Thus, management has the prerogative to take the necessary action to correct the situation and protect its organization. When personal differences between employees and management affect the work environment, the peace of the company is affected. Thus, an employee's attitude problem is a valid ground for his termination. What about sexual harassment? In one case, a male employee hugged and kissed a female co-worker in Navarro versus Damasco, GR number 101875. In trying to escape from the man, she tripped and hurt her feet and hands, and this happened in company premises, although outside of working hours. In this case, the Supreme Court ruled that the harassment of an employee by a co-employee within the company premises, even after office hours, is a work-related matter, considering that the peace of the company is thereby affected. Thank you for watching until the end. If you liked the video, please leave a thumbs up. If it helped you in any way, please share it with your friends. If you think this, uh, this video can help them, please do leave your comments and I'll try my best to make videos about law or about areas of law which you guys would want to see. Have a great day.